Today, we're going to look at the graphs of sine and cosine. And we're going to see take the base graphs of y equals sine theta and y equals cosine theta and see what we need to do to adjust the amplitude and the period. So let's remind ourselves of what these graphs look like. So if we, the sinusoidal graphs, we know there was a top. And then we had a middle. And we had a bottom. And these were evenly spaced. And these are the highly technical names for these parts of the graph. There's a top, a middle, and a bottom. Moreover, we're, so we got, we got these graphs by tracking the x uh, graph of cosine by tracking x the x coordinate around the unit circle. And then uh, the graph of sine we got by tracking the y coordinate around the unit circle. And so what we had was these graphs that went uh, up and down and up and down and up and down. So just kind of cycling through. So once again, same thing as yesterday. I have a graph paper signed to my fancy notebook and I'm using the non-graph paper side. I don't know if you could see these tiny dots, but I have to count them to make sure they're evenly spaced. I'm just kidding, I'm not counting them. All right, so the graph, our sinusoidal graphs, just kind of go up and down at mimicking the point going a point going around the circle. So the graph goes up, kind of smooths out and heads down, changes concavity, changes direction, changes concavity, changes direction. I tend to overemphasize the concavity helps keep me from just drawing straight lines. So here's the kind of shape that we're going to get out of graphs of sines and cosines and variations on the graph of sine and cosine. I'm gonna pick cosine like we did yesterday. Cosine starts at the tops. And the middle of the basic cosine graph is on the x-axis or the theta axis. All right, we defined some terms last time. The distance from the middle to the top is going to be called the amplitude, and it will be the same as the distance from the middle to the bottom. That's the kind of graphs that we're dealing with here. The distance from the top to the middle is called the amplitude, and the distance from the middle to the bottom is called the is also the amplitude. So the top and bottom are evenly spaced about the middle. The length of one cycle is going to be the period of the graph. So this, a cycle goes from, in this case, we'll go from top to top. And this will be one cycle or one period. We'll call the length of a cycle a, the period of the graph. Tracking the, um, the values around the unit circle. This is where we start at the point zero one and then the X decreases down to negative one and then increases back up to one when we go from zero to, pi, to two pi. So we're back at the top 
when we hit two pi, we're way down at negative one when we are at pi. So these happen at all the quadrants. So we hit zero at three pi over two and we hit zero at pi over two. So those are the four quadrants. Those are the places where we are. Uh, that, so this lines up, this lines up with what we know about cosine in the different quadrants. From zero to pi over two, we know that cosine is positive. Here we are in the first quadrant. Then from pi over two to pi, there we are in the second quadrant and cosine is negative. From pi to three pi over two, the cosine is still negative in the third quadrant. And then from three pi over two to two pi, we're in the fourth quadrant and cosine is positive again. Because cosine is positive when x is positive, sine is positive when y is positive. And what we know is that our basic amplitude, if I say that this is um, y equals cosine x, the basic amplitude is equal to one. So if this is at zero, the top is at one and the bottom is at negative one. And because we're stopping here at two pi, one period is equal to two pi. So if we change the amplitude, we want to look at how changes in the amplitude and changes in the period affect the function y equals cosine x. What, what effect does changing the amplitude and the period have on the equation that represents the function. So that's what we're interested in. So y equals cosine x has amplitude one and period of two pi. If we make changes in the equation, how will that affect, how will that change the amplitude and how will that change the period and the other way around? How do changes in the equation affect the amplitude and the period? Or how do changes in the amplitude and the period uh, change the equation? That's what we're on about today. So with that in mind, we want to bring up a graphing calculator. No, not this graphing calculator. We're actually going to graph some things. And this calculator is not as good at making graphs. Oh, I'm sorry. It's technology from the 90s. Don't be too mean to your calculator. And it's really good at a lot of other things. So yeah, I still have value which is why we charge the same price for it, even though it's technology from the 90s. Imagine the first computer you had from 20 years ago and how much it cost. Would you pay that same price for that same computer today in 2021? And the answer is clearly no, because those components won't even be available because no one's making that stuff anymore. You know what I mean? 20-year-old cars could be cool. 20-year-old computers are never going to be cool. Except my Atari 2600. That's, that's super dope. Let's take a look at an awesome graphing calculator called Desmos. So uh, we're going to go to desmos.com and we're going to explore some ideas. So just uh, click on the graphing calculator button. And then we will take a look at our 
graph. So let us graph y equals cosine x to get a baseline of what we're looking at. And there it is. There's our cosine. We can see our high point at 0, 1, our low point at pi negative 1. There's pi over 2, 0, 3 pi over 2, 0. And there's 2 pi for that one cycle. So I'm going to bring the graph over here. And here's that cycle where we get back to the top. There we are at the bottom. So what I want to do is I want to create a graph that has the same shape, but I want the amplitude to be bigger. So let's graph. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cosine x. I'm going to multiply by 2. I'm going to write 2 cosine x. And we can see that that is going to increase the amplitude. So now we've got from 0 to 2. It still matches when things are 0, because I took cosine of pi over 2 and multiplied it by 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. When I multiply it by 2, I still get 0. There's pi negative 2 and then 2 pi 2. So we can see that putting a coefficient out in front of the cosine changes the amplitude. If we really want to drive this home, I can put, uh, let's see, what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it A cosine x. And then I'll add a slider for A. And now here, so in the green, if I start changing the value of A, we can see what the amplitude does. I can even make it negative, and that flips the whole graph over. Let me turn off number two. And there it is. So we can see this. We can see the effect that the coefficient has. Notice that the period is not changing. Changing the coefficient has changed, is changing the amplitude of the graph. If I could slide it back and forth, I could make it look like I was talking. Changing the amplitude by changing the coefficient. Notice that when we hit the zero, it zeroes everything out. So that's pretty cool. Any questions? Right now, my TI-84 is like, oh, oh I, can't, I can't do things like that. I'm like, well, it's OK, TI-84. You have other strengths. You still have value. Check out all these points with a leading coefficient, uh, with, a co with a coefficient of 3 that stretch the amplitude. So that tells us that the number in front of the cosine is going to give us the amplitude. So let's turn that off for a minute. And let's build, let's look at another graph. So here, notice where I put, I'd use multiplication. That's the first thing to notice. I use multiplication and I put the multiplication on the outside after the cosine. So what happens if I look at y equals cosine of 2x? Oops. There we go. I thought the black was a little severe. So notice that the cosine, when I look at the cosine of 2x, it looks like I'm going twice as fast. So I 0, 1. My amplitude is still 1. But now look at where all these points are. Oh, they barely even fit. Oh, I also missed one. 0, 1, pi over 4, 0, pi over 2, negative 1, 3 pi over 4, and pi. So instead of one cycle going all the way out to 2 pi, one cycle takes place in pi units. So instead of one cycle being 360 degrees, one cycle is now 180 degrees. It got cut in half when I multiplied by 2 before taking the cosine. Notice that the amplitude did not change. So if I go back to my a cosine x, and I change this to an a cosine of, let's use b x, and then add a slider for b, if I start adjusting the b slider, that changes the period. 
So when B is equal to, oops, that's zero. When B is equal to one, ah, it's hard to land it at one. There we go. When B is equal to one, the period is two pi. But when I change B equal to two, the period has been cut in half to pi. If I change B equals three, the period now goes from zero three to two pi over three. And when B goes to four, the period is now pi over two. The period is normally two pi, putting a four in front of the X, divides the period by four. So now the period is pi over two. If I go the other direction and make it less than one, that's gonna stretch it out to 0.5. Okay, come on, 0.5, there we go. So now we can see that the period goes from, we go from zero three, then the next high point is at four pi. So when the coefficient of X is 0.5, the period has been stretched out to four pi, twice as long. So notice that changing B changes, changes the period, changing A changes the amplitude. If we multiply outside the cosine, we change the amplitude. If we multiply inside the cosine, we change the frequency. AM, FM. Any questions? I just realized any questions and I can't see the chat. So let's stop the sharing and let's summarize what we have discovered. All right, so what we want to notice is that we're gonna make some changes using multiplication and we can multiply before the cosine and we can multiply after the cosine. So we're using changes, we're gonna summarize by using changes of multiplication. The amplitude and the period are adjusted with multiplication. We can either multiply before the cosine or we can multiply after the cosine. So if I write y is equal to a, I'm just gonna randomly decide a, I'm gonna do it like I did it in the, in the, in the demonstration. So if we look at y equals a cosine bx, having bx, this is multiplication that takes place before the cosine. Look at the order of operations of the things that happen to x. First we multiply by b, then we do the cosine, then we multiply by a. So this multiplication by b happens before the cosine. So multiplicate, here is multiplication by B. This is multiplication before cosine. The A, the coefficient is multiplication after the cosine. So I use multiplication before cosine and multiplication after cosine. Multiplication before the cosine changed the period. Multiplication before the cosine changes the period. The period 
is 2 pi divided by b. If b is equal to 1, then we have our normal period of 2 pi. When we changed b to 2, 2 pi divided by 2 was pi. And so we changed, the period was just pi. That squished the period, but did not affect the amplitude. Notice that this multiplication before the cosine made a horizontal change in the function. So it was a horizontal and it was a stretch. Or a negative stretch, which is a squish. So it was horizontal and it was a stretch. It's changing the period without adjusting things up and down. It's not changing the amplitude. Notice that multiplication after the cosine changed the amplitude. Multiplication after the cosine changes the amplitude. And so the amplitude was whatever the number in front was. The amplitude is just whatever the coefficient is. Notice that the changing the amplitude is a horizontal change, uh, sorry, a vertical change. And so it's a vertical because uh, a vertical change and it created a stretch. It didn't adjust anything in the period. It just stretched it out vertically. So it's a vertical change, oops, vertical stretch. In both cases, we uh, adjusted, and when we had multiplication before or multiplication after, the effect was some kind of stretch. That's the effect of multiplication on a graph. It's gonna produce a stretch, multiplication, produces a stretch. Multiplication produces a stretch. When our adjustment is multiplication, we should expect things to stretch. If our adjustment happens before the cosine, we should expect a horizontal change. So it's bef before makes a horizontal change. Before changes are horizontal, after changes are gonna be vertical. Before means we're adjusting the input, the X's, the stuff that's going into the cosine. After, we're multiplying the output of cosine, so we're adjusting the Y's. So after produces a vertical change. Before changes are horizontal, after changes are vertical, and multiplication produces a stretch. Let's switch over to the um, let's switch over to the graphing calculator again. And let's start with a different function entirely. Let's suppose that we had, let's look at a base graph of y equals um, x cubed minus x. Is this the one that, yeah, this'll do. Let's look at the function x cubed minus x. Let's zoom in a little bit and remind ourselves why this is such a much better calculator than our graphing calculator. Dude, I'm right here. 
it's okay graphing calculator you still you still have value so notice that we have zeros at negative one zero and one if i multiply this function on the outside if i multiply this function on the outside by a that stretches things so if I change A to one where I started, oh, that's 1.2. If I change, uh, we see the maximum is at uh, 0.385 and here's at negative 0.385. Our zeros are at one, uh, negative one, zero and one. If I multiply on the outside, I stretch the graph. See how it stretches up so now I've multiplied those values by two and a half. So now my maximum is at 9 point, uh, 0.962, two and a half times what I started with, but the X intercepts don't change. They all have Y, value, y coordinates of zero, multiply by 2.5, nothing's gonna happen. So if I have, so A times X cubed minus X. Now let's adjust this by, instead of having just X to the third power, let's multiply before the function happens. So I'm change the X's to BX. Now we can see when I adjust by multiplying before, if we multiply before, the function happens, if we multiply the X's before they hit the front of this function, we are changing the frequency. Notice that the, uh, we still have the top and bottom, these high points are not changing, but the X intercepts are, I guess zero, zero is not changing. That's like the nice middle. So adjusting, multiplying before the function happened changes horizontal by stretching. Multiplying after the function happened changes vertical by stretching. And we can drop it all the way down to zero where everything just zeros out. And if we go negative, it gets a mirror image. And notice the same thing happens if we do, if we change B to zero, then it flattens out, but then it goes negative and, it's, and it flips it the other direction. Any questions? So what we want to notice is that multiplication will produce a stretch or a squish or even flip things over if we go fully negative. Multiplication produces a stretch. Multiplication, uh, doing something before will make a horizontal change. Doing something after will make a vertical change. The way you want to think about it just thinking in terms of how to, to remember the period is two pi over B because we have to remember to divide by whatever the coefficient is. Whatever the coefficient is, that's how much faster the X's are gonna go. That's like making the X's go faster. So cosine of two X, so think about going, I've used all the colors, so I'm just gonna have to repeat a color. Hmm. Cosine of 2x is going around the circle twice as fast. So it goes around the circle twice as fast. That's why it does one cycle in pi units instead of two pi units. If I multiply by 0.5, cosine of 0.5x is going around the unit circle half as fast. So cosine of 0.5x will have a, a period of four pi. Two, pi. two pi divided by a half is four pi. Before the function horizontal, after the function vertical, multiplication makes a stretch. Any questions?
there's a delivery happening, so my dog's got to warn us. <laughs> All right, so those are the things that we want to notice. We want to notice multiplication produces a stretch. Multiplication before will make a horizontal stretch. Multiplication after will make a vertical stretch. The next thing is to change our multiplication to addition. Addition before the function, addition after the function. And we just have to figure out what addition produces in the graph. Because before is going to be some horizontal and after will be some vertical. All right. That's going to do it for today. Keep an eye out on the canvas for a discussion. It's going to be a graded discussion where we graph some functions. Um, that's how we're going to deal with the homework. Or that's kind of how going to be how we deal with some of the homework in this section. All right, that's it for today. Uh, that's it for this week. I'll see y'all on Monday and thanks for playing.